Welcome to Chapter 4's video lecture on relational databases for AIS. In this chapter, what you're going to learn is basically the importance and advantages of databases. Uh, in accounting, we use Excel and Access, probably Excel more um, robustly than Access. And we use Excel as a database many of the times, and so you want to be able to differentiate between the database and a file-based legacy system. Additionally, you also want to know the difference between what a logical and a physical view of a database is. And then you want to just know some basic fundamentals of databases. And we'll go through the data dictionary and the database um, management systems languages. We're also going to talk about relational databases and more importantly, how to organize your data and how to get a well-structured table so that you're storing your data in a relational database properly. And more importantly, you're gonna actually do some queries in um, Access. So this is very helpful. We're gonna do some stuff in Excel and Access that'll get us to do that. So basically a database is where you're just putting a bunch of information and you have like a group of files and they're related in some fashion and you're just gathering them. So a file is basically records and then a record has field and a field has a specific attribute. So your database may be up here and then so this is maybe your entire AIS system. So here you have the customer files. And then here are the customer records and then the fields within that record that you may have like the name, number, street address, etc. And then so that's one area. So we and so basically if you're thinking of an Excel workbook, right, your actual workbook may be a database, your file may be a tab, your record is a row and your fields may be or your record is a column and your fields may be rows. So try to make that um a sound like analogy so that you kind of understand how a database is. We love databases. I think they're great. There are several advantages, right? Your data is pretty much integrated, th synthesized. It's easy to share, right? And then you don't have any duplication of efforts or data redundancy. Your data is pretty much independent of the program. So you can use a lot of external sources and we call that other database connection, ODBC. And your other database connection is basically you can have an AIS system and link into another access system. And it, it, it usually is done quite easily. And then you can actually do some reporting and some cross-functional analysis. Now, there are some advantages and disadvantages to Excel and Access. The key I say is that Access has forms and reports that you can pretty much populate, and that's where it becomes really handy. And also in Access, you can get information in one fashion and then have it export, like export out in a CSV file in another fashion for upload into your AIS. So those are just um, some ways that you can use Access and Excel and their differences. So obviously with every database, there's different users, right? And those can also be an um, external of the database. With, and then so those views have to be logical, right? So they have to have a logical view of your database of the data. And then you have an internal level of the database, which shows how the actual you know, data is stored, where it's physically stored. So when you're designing a database, you need to understand the end users. And that's the hardest part too. Same thing for a full AIS system, right? Your end users may be uh, your VPs of, say, of all like sales and production, so you can give them proper information, but it may also be your board, your uh, regulatory authorities, for example. So you wanna make sure that you keep them in mind. When designing a database, you definitely need some type of conceptual view because you need to start big picture. You look at the whole thing, then you start seeing what files you need, how the files relate to one another, relationships are important, parent and child relationships are important in data, right? This is the main and then this, this child data reports into the parent data and we'll talk more about that. Then the key is a data dictionary, okay? That's pretty much the blueprint of the structure. This has your elements, your types, the programs that use what, the data elements that you're taking from various aspects and the outputs. This data dictionary is part of our evidence. Remember we talked about previously our documentation and that documentation serves as evidence for the auditors and um, SOCs. Well, this blueprint is pretty much, you wanna make sure prior to implementing a, any AIS system or if an AIS system is in place that you do have this data dictionary so you know where, uh, how the database reads, what the elements are, what the fields are. So we have different languages, right? So we talk about data definition language. And so here we're doing the data dictionary. You create the database. You're looking at the logical view and the specific records. Data manipulation and data query. 
One of the key aspects that employers say is that uh, students coming out of college do not have the data manipulation skills in Excel that they need. So here you're actually changing the database, right? You're updating, you're adding, you're deleting. So data manipulation is critical, not only in Excel, but in databases and AIS language. And then what use is all this information if you can't query it, right? You can't get some sort of report or retrieve it or display it in those dashboards or in those, um, you know, maybe executive summaries. So you want to make sure that that's available too. So relational databases, here you're talking about um, the conceptual and external uh, schematic that you have of the data view where you're truly stored in one table. And here the conceptual view is basically you're looking at this information as one huge table and then you're trying to break it down. So you may have tables with several other tables here. So that's the key in this case. So here's a conceptual view, right? We have our customer name, our sales invoice, and our customer total, and then where they all relate. So this is just your simple, like your end user report. Maybe this is your Excel spreadsheet that you give to your, um, you know, maybe VPs to show them, hey, these are your customers, they're the invoices. And then here you see the invoice numbers, part of our sales, our customer numbers, part of our customer area, our um, sales inventory, here are our invoice, and then here are the inventory items. So think of each of these um, circles as a module within your AIS system, and then that stores this data. And so when you enter customer 151, you get um, this name with all this information, and then when you enter item 10, you get the unit price of $499 for this television. So relational databases. And notice your conceptual view goes from what you're looking to produce to exactly where the data is housed and stored. And so then we need primary keys. That's the issue here. Notice we have sales invoices, a sequential list of number. Notice we have customers, a sequential list of numbers. Primary keys have to be unique, right? And we usually use quite a few numbers in this process. So here, but now here, the customer number is a foreign key in the sales table. The customer number is coming from the customer table and so it's actually being inputted into the sales table as a foreign key. And then the primary key though is what uniquely identifies that customer and the key here is uniquely. Okay, and so since, um, it ha and then the sales table relates to the customer table by this row here because then you see that we are selecting this customer. So again, a primary key is unique. A um, the, uh, in the sales table, the customer number is foreign because that is coming from the customer table. So then when you have a set of related tables, again, the data stored in one huge table, that can be pretty redundant and it can be inefficient, right? You may not be able to update it entirely. You may not be able to insert or delete. So that's why we wanna have different sets of tables. Hence why we have the sales table and the customer table. And so every column in the row must have a single value. That is a critical piece to database management, right? The primary key can never be null or empty, right? We always need that because that's how we know where it's going. And that gives us some integrity to that data. So for example, in sales invoices, this may be automatically generated to make sure it's primary key. And same thing for your customer. If I go in to enter an, a new customer and say 153 was the last one, I'd get 154. And if a second later you come in to do the same, you will get 155. So this is a process that we try to automate. Now, if you have a foreign key that is not null, then you have to make sure that that corresponds to the primary key in another table. So that's called um, referential integrity, right? So entity integrity is you wanna make sure that no primary key is empty and then referential integrity, the primary key is of another table is in the foreign key and the foreign key is not blank. We hate blanks in database management. And so then everything is pretty much the same. So once you follow these rules, you'll pretty much get some nice normal data where you can go ahead and add and subtract um, uh, rows and customers and records with no problem. Now queries, right? That's where you want some specific information. Queries is where we do an access reports or different forms to gather that information, right? And so these also are in relational databases, but here you're kind of sorting through a bunch of files. So the query is like you're asking a question. So for example, what are the invoices of this customer and who was the salesperson? 
So this is exactly what it looks like in Access, and I would recommend that you practice that here. Then you'd see the sales invoice number as the field, and this is the query field in Access, and then the sales person, and then the customer, and here you're selecting the particular customer. So uh, definitely practice with queries in, in Access because they're very powerful tools, especially if your data keeps growing and growing. And so then once you actually run this query on our data, you would see that we have two invoices and here's the customer and two different salespeople. And if you wanted to add the invoice amount, you would just continue to add, we have the number here, the salesperson, you might have a fourth column here to add the invoice amount. And note that that invoice amount would come exactly from the sales um, as well. So here are your data uh, key terms for this chapter, right? Database management system, very important. We have online analytical processes, OLAP. That's also another important one. We didn't cover that in this lecture, but it is in your text. We have our query language, our manipulation language, our definitions, and a database administrator. This is a lucrative um, certification to have with Microsoft. So this concludes our lecture.